Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is San. This is a reading today actually for um, for the collective energy as opposed to any particular sign. It's for all signs. Um, I actually sat down to do the Pisces reading. I actually pulled all of these cards completely uh, in the mindset that I was doing a Pisces reading. But what's interesting is that I chose to do this entire spread with my um, Oracle Mystical Moments deck, which I've never done before. It's always been kind of a support deck. I've never done a whole spread with them. So it was interesting to me right off the bat that I felt compelled for the first time ever to use this deck solely for the reading. Um, and then, I, you know, I got the cards out and I was kind of sitting with the message and, and um, getting ready to record it and something just wasn't sitting right about it, about it being Pisces. It wasn't feeling particularly Piscean to me for some reason. I don't know why. I'm sure, you know, Pisces is part of the collective, of course. So, of course, this is reflective of the Pisces, Pisces energy as well. Um, but there's there before I started recording, I, I kept thinking about there was a, um, a viewer, a subscriber on my channel, Ascension Explorer. She requested that I do a Lionsgate collective energy reading. Um, and I told her that I, I may perhaps do that. And I felt like right before I, I hit the record button, it kept coming up that awareness thinking, oh, I didn't get to that reading. I really should have got a reading done for her. She was so excited about it. All these emojis and celebration when I said I might, when I said I might do it. So it was kind of pulling on me. And then it occurred to me, this is the collective reading and not the Pisces reading. And that's why it was feeling a little off for me. But the second I realized this is a collective message in response to her specific request, it all clicked into place and now I feel good about it and I know it's right. So let's just jump in. So collective, the collective, we begin your reading with the perfect key and secrets. Um, interestingly, I was seeing this as I always see this energy as a very conforming, hardworking um, contributor of society because of her proper dress and the hat, and she just looks really prim and proper. So it's like this uh, um, this key, this key to something has been delivered to you recently by spirit or by epiphany or by just an aha moment of enlightenment. Something that you've been searching for has been delivered directly, clearly to you. Here's the key that you've been looking for, the perfect key that you've probably spent a, a significant portion of your life looking for. And it came out next to this um, secrets card, which also has a ring of keys and the moon, but it's with a child. And so what I'm seeing here is that they're starting to be um, a more and more obviously in the collective an awareness, a message being delivered to the collective awareness about kind of a key. It's almost like a secret that um, was tucked away. You came into this awareness. You came into this reality with this awareness, but some point in your childhood because of this child here, um, it's like you specifically locked this portion of your psyche away, the moon, locked it up and tucked it away out of sight as a child, as part of this collective energy that we're in. It's like many, many of us have done this, but it's like that's it's coming full circle now and that key is being returned to you. It's like you specifically were the one who locked it away. You know, this happened, this is where my daughter is right now. She's six years old and she's in the process of doing this right now. And I see it happening and I try my best to stop her from doing it. But there's just this, um, this need to conform, you know, as being social animals wanting to fit in. She wants to be just like all the other kids at school and she doesn't want to talk to angels anymore and she doesn't want to. Um, be special. I always tell her how special she is and she says, I don't want to be special. I just want to be a regular kid. So we choose, we have chosen to lock it away, but now that key is being returned to us. And it's funny because it's like ever since this time where it was locked away, it's almost like we forgot we did that. 
And so we spend all of this time since then searching for what is missing in our lives, um, you know, searching, 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 and not realizing that, you know, we had access to it and we tucked it out of sight, right? So the next two cards out, interestingly, the journey and my dear friend, the journey, you know, you're on this journey heading in a specific direction. But now that this incoming information is coming in, some of us has been coming in for a while. Some of us is brand new um, enlightenment moments. Some of us are still just about to meet this energy. You know, it comes to each of us at different times in our timelines. But the moment that it does, it's like you're headed in one direction and all of a sudden you're halting your your journey and a, an absolute U-turn is re required the moment you get this key, this missing puzzle piece that unlocks the whole, the whole problem, the whole, you know, this whole complex puzzle that we've been searching our whole lives to solve. The moment that key arrives, it's, <coughs> sorry, it's that moment where so many of us have completely walked out of our lives, walked out of jobs, walked out of relationships, completely did a U-turn and started in an absolutely new direction, right? Being comp fully supported, fully supported on our journey. Um, and interestingly, this is, this is a child again, as opposed to this adult, even the animal is more mature here. So it's like this journey, this direction that you faced in at this choice point where you tucked away your uniqueness, your gifts in order to fit in to the collective, uh, you began this journey at this age, this young age, and now the switch is flipping and you're, you're spinning in an absolutely new direction now. It's not a 360 turn because that's completely around. It's 180. Complete pivot in the other direction. And again, with the Morning Dew Girl and the Pure Nature card, I just love how these, they kind of come out in pairs, which is interesting. Um, this Morning Dew Girl is very much to me like this perfect key card because I always see her as the hard worker. She's like a laborer. She is not happy. She is, you know, collecting, working hard. Uh, I often see her also as, you know, morning dew as the early ride, early bird gets the worm. So just this really hardworking, diligent, laboring energy, playing your part, doing the work, being a, it comes through as good girl. And I hate that phrase. I hate the phrase good girl. Anytime anybody's ever said to me, oh, good girl, it just, it just makes my skin crawl. So that's what this is. This is like the good girl energy. And so pure nature is coming. This is what's. This is what you've been in up until this key was delivered to you, but the key is bringing into awareness this pure nature of yours, obviously, and then suddenly like a microphone put in, put right in your face, like, um, you know, it's, it's time for your voice to be heard. It's time to put down all of this burden and um, labor and, you know, struggling uphill that you've been doing, put it all, you know, and like, okay, I see this flower she's wearing. This is you um, blossoming into your absolute pure nature, like absolutely naked, but just just clothed in and presenting your passion, your nature, your purity. It's absolutely gorgeous. But in this one, you know, fully clothed, cloaked, and the and the flower, you know, the pure nature is in the background and dimmed out. See what I mean? It's like put into the background. It's locked away in that moon energy, in that, you know, um, deep in the subconscious realm out out of sight because you're too busy working laboring getting through your day but this is this key that's being delivered to the collective is bringing this back into full force it's almost like and you know it's a very it's a very like eye in the needle type experience where you've got a lot going on in your life like i said this this absolute pivot point where you turn in the opposite direction and absolute absolute U-turn in the opposite direction back to where you locked this away. And the eye of the needle moment is like you're shedding all of this identity, all of this hard work, all of this um, imposed belief and construct and just returning absolutely. It's like being stripped naked and it can be very startling and uncomfortable. One moment, I got to quiet that down. 
Hey guys, okay, we're back. They just switched to the Xbox and it suddenly got really, really loud. So, um, so where was I? Okay, this is a, you know, very much like a, um, you know, the awakening rebirth transformation process where like everything that isn't absolutely essential and part of your pure nature, um, your core essence is completely stripped away sometimes very, very quickly. It can be experienced as a tower moment can feel really destructive, um, you know, depending on your state of mind and your understanding at the time. It, it's very, it's definitely very disruptive for anybody, but it's like a continuum, right? It can be extremely disruptive or it can just be uh, an embraced massive change in our lives, right? So, um, and then the Sleeping Beauty's Dream card talking about how this part of you, this massive part of you has just been put asleep to sleep, has been put into the recesses of your, um, you know, you, you hang out there in the astral realm. It's like when you go to sleep, you're right there in that full embodiment, in that, um, in that energy that you locked away, you know, all this, these beautiful roses. You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, all of this stuff, all of this gorgeous, it's like a whole universe of expansive energy that you've um, tucked in behind your awareness is now kind of um, coming, descending down and blooming, right? With the, with the roses and the connection there. I hope you're seeing what I'm talking about. So, sorry, I got a little off focus there with the, with the kids. Let me just get back here. So the night and day card coming out after Sleeping Beauty's dream, it's like I said, this was all locked away. If we've all, we've all had those dreams. It, this always makes me think of those dreams that we've all had where you suddenly discover a new room or a whole new wing of your house and you're absolutely delighted as you discover this kind of trap door or this you know, door you never knew was there and you open it and you go through and you realize that your home is way more expansive than you ever new and like how did I not realize all of this was here it's like that's all your the part of your entity that you've blocked out of your view in order to fit in to the collective right but now the collective is changing that's what this whole reading is about and the lion's gate and all of this gorgeous energy so um the night the day and night card I always think it should say night and day but it's like you're you're now pulling that out pulling that out of the moon energy this moon where you locked it away in this nighttime moon dreamscape realm where you know you were only really fully embodied in your astral realm for years and years and years it's like you're now starting to pull that into your into your day right bringing it into your um first of all right in in front of you into your conscious focus where you can see it examine it experience it in this in this um reality with your full understanding now right because when you were when you were a kid and you locked it away um you know you you i mean it's hard to say what we knew like really. can you remember back to when you were four and how you were perceiving all of this gorgeous expansiveness that of your being before it got locked down it was just this natural wondrous flowing state that we were in right so, it, you know, it, like I said, it's starting to be brought back out into the daylight, into your physical realm. But you can see here, it's like she's, she's, um, the energy is still just kind of seated, not active, like examining it, aware of it, but still not really fully engaged in it in a way that's dynamic. And it's just, it's this kind of, well, it's the transition point. So there's a real, um, um, adjustment that needs to be made so that could be what's occurring here it's like the getting ready to get up and and act it's like the it's like the breaking dawn just the day is just starting to break on the collective on humanity remember this is a collective message so yes it's for each individual as well but this is a bigger you know if like I said we're all at different stages of this journey but overall this is the collective energy this is what the collective is going through right so when this awareness begins to bleed through into your conscious state where you're holding it in your hands and looking at it and examining it in your wake state there is a process there it's like you don't just jump right into it um, because 
you know, it's like going from, it's like going from this morning dew, subdued, um, respectful, modest, good girl energy into this queen bee, right? So it's like, it's like pulling this energy over here. There's an adjustment there. You don't just go from this girl to this queen overnight. You have to climatize to it, adjust um, your self-image, your identity. Um, you have to be comfortable in your skin. You have to, you have to be absolutely okay stepping forward. I mean, this is a big, it's like stepping forward saying, I'm the queen bee. I am the queen bee. The queen bee is the creator of this entire realm, right? Like that's a massive, you're going from this, um, you know, I take what little bits of this physical reality I can conjure together or, or, you know, dig out of the soil and labor to work, labor to work them together and build a kind of a, the best reality I can possibly for myself, for what I have available to me. It's kind of flipping to the other side where instead of just getting the dew drops off of this creation, you are the one creating it. You're the one pollinating it. You are the queen bee. You're at the center of the entire construct, the entire creation. So it's a massive leap, right? So of course it takes time. It takes time to step into this energy with to the moon and back. It's just more of this, you know, you're now, you're now, um, you know, fully aware of this moon energy. It's, it's like, it's kind of this back and forth, you know, it's, it takes, it takes a while to really, really pull it out to, you know, there's, there's a whole process. It's peeling back the onion, you know, it's just processing and purging and all of that, that we're aware of where, but, the more you do it, the more you go to the moon and back, the more your multidimensional aspects blossom, right? But there's an interesting thing here that was jumping out at me with this queen bee card, you know, and she's got these bees. The bees to me are, are you know, yes, they are laborers as well, right? But, but you're not the worker bee, you're the queen bee. Um, but the bees themselves... You know, they're generally thought of as laborers or worker bees, but I always see them as multidimensional beings because they are trans-dimensional. They, they defy physics, so they're not bound in the 3D realm. But you're like, uh, you know, a step beyond that even. You, you have the multidimensional aspects in the palm of your hand. That's the, that's the leap that we're taking as a collective and as an individual from being the one collecting you know, collecting the, the, um, the dew to being the one actually creating the entire garden and almost one step removed from that, the generative source of the entire energy that pollinates and generates the, the physical realm, right? So anyway, um, having these two bees in your hand and then here, sitting with these two birds it's this it's this that's what i'm talking about this back and forth of of you know in and out of this energy and and in and out of of to you know almost debating whether you can really step forward and and embody this powerful energy right because it, um this red garden card comes out next to this queen bee and it had all of this energy this red garden always has this kind of Garden of Eden energy in it where it's it's like this this is that imposed belief system about being the queen bee you know when you're a child and you're in that natural you live in in your imagination and everything is magical you are the queen bee you are the creator of your of your realm you don't even doubt it you just know it right but there's there, there comes a time when it almost it's shamed out of you to think that you're the center of the universe and you know all that so the the garden of eden starts to bring in this this blushing and and shame shaming energy this this feeling like this is inappropriate and you know it should be kind of she's got she's starting to wear a blindfold she's starting to cover over this awareness right so that's what's being overcome here it's like years and years and years of 
wearing that blindfold willingly, choosing it and, and, and moving in that direction by free will, and then giving yourself the permission, you know, really spending time and contemplating whether you have, whether you have the authority to make the decision to be this queen bee, right? It's where everybody thinks like, well, who am I to think that I am this, this powerful? Who are we as a collective to think that we are actually the creators of this realm, right? So, um, and then the Eva card and the long way home, it's interesting because my daughter's name is Eva. This card is really a challenging energy for me because, because my daughter's name is Eva, but this card always comes through as a kind of a nasty energy to me. But I see it as kind of, um, it's, you know, the eye of the needle of the birth canal. Cause she looks like she's being birthed out of this plant, but it coming with this long way home. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So what I was seeing with these two cards today is that they were, they were connected. They're like the same energy. If you flip this one over, I don't know if you'll see it. This is just my, my eye picking this up as the message here is like, these are the same energies. There's something about these shapes and this bulbous part at the bottom and, you know, this, this kind of squeezing, you know, that it, these are the same energies. So the message that I was getting from this, um, you know, especially with my daughter, um, you know, all this information about being birthed into this realm, being birthed into this realm, you know, it kind of being uh, uh, almost like a fall from grace, right? The card should be appearing this way. Perhaps it's when it's upright like this that I don't understand it. When I flip it over, I kind of see, yes, this is this is like the, the emerging into this reality. Um appearing as this card it's like this anchoring energy it's like like i said this fall from grace it's like you're this massive enormous giant energy that you know and as a collective as well individually as a collective that is being pulled down and anchored into this physical realm and tied to it so it's like this binding you know um what do i want to say about it it's like this is this is where it it starts to to get confusing between you know I when you're a child you know that you're this massive gorgeous energy but then you get funneled down into this little little piece of yourself and you start to get confused about what the truth is because everybody else here is is behaving in really small ways and conforming and following the rules and tucking away their magic and you know what I mean so your magic up here funneled down into this small little anchor point it starts to get confusing, you know, the longer we're here, it gets confusing and uncomfortable, right? With this Eva energy, it's like a tight squeeze. And, you know, to resolve that discomfort, you just, you just tuck this part away and you allow yourself to be this tiny piece, right? So, but interestingly, the elephant is here and the elephant is all about remembrance. It's like, there's always, there's always the key. This is the key. There's always that key there. It's always available to you. It's like it's on your shoulder, right? This remembrance. It's always there waiting for you to turn your awareness towards it again. It has to, just like it's your choice to lock it down, it has to then be your choice to engage it again, right? So that's where we are. At the end of this um, YouTube part of the reading here, that's where we are. We're, as a collective, where we are now... Um, like I said, a lot of us are already, we've already engaged with this. We've already remembered. We've already pulled this forward. We've already done all of this, pulling it forward and, and remembering it. Um, but this is the collective read. So it, the collective overall is at a really amazing um, breakthrough point where they're just starting to turn and discover the key that's being brought to them, right? This remembrance, the key, it's being brought to the collective you know, and many of us, like I said, are, are uh, farther along this path than the collective overall. But this is a good, this is really good news, guys, because this means that a larger portion of the collective is now about to turn and remember this, find this key, find this key, which then turns their entire trajectory around, right? It's a, it's a massive shift. So I'm going to continue to pull some more cards. I think I'm going to stick with the Mystical Moments deck for the extended. If you're interested in that, the link is in the description box. And if not, I will see you in the Pisces reading tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.